And we're back again for take two of In a yeah. Perfect World by myself because Vinny's off partying with um, Rednecks, I guess, in Tulsa, Oklahoma this evening. No, he left Sunday. Thanks, Grim. Appreciate that. But uh, no, that was my clerical error. Not I actually did everything right, but uh, <laughs> oh, I don't always pay attention to some of the details. Anyway, this is Flash at In a Perfect World. On the 14th of May, 2019, and uh, we're going to say hi to all the bats and bodies chitter-chattering up one side and down the other in the reallibertymedia.com chat. And we got tonight, we got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, DC Brackets, uh, Anti, Anti underscore Double Dipper. He's making it look like there's lots of people here tonight. <laughs> Asmo, Chalcedony, Echelon, French Slaved, Graham Z, IB Don C, A hey, Miss Mary, Java Doctor 2, J Dread just left. Thank you. Kate, Miss Kate, what are you doing way down there? You're supposed to be up at the top. Something's weird. Anyway, we got Rob Works, Trust, number one, Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dork, Woodman, Phantom, and well then who's having a little bit of surgery coming up. So send him your positive brainwaves because that shit makes a huge difference whether you believe it or not. Uh, Circle, hello, honey. Cyborg Noodle, me, Frumpy, Gromit, ha, 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 ha. Jays, nines, Jays, Carl underscore Marks, the bot. <laughs> Funniest fucking bot on the site. Kiss and Sock Puppet. And there's your lineup of bots and bodies to play with in the chat room today. Yeah, I always say night because it's my night and I should I should learn. You'd think I'd figure this out after all this time. But I disavowed the clock and I just have to be reined in daily to be, sh you know, have that sh thing shoved in my face. I don't, I don't believe it's real. I don't believe the shit that they tell us is true. Nothing. This whole fucking life is just, uh, it's, you know, progress must be promoted by the right guy. And if it's not promoted by the right guy, somehow or another, the, sh the, the sheep, you know, because we're sheep, we're, we're kept in pens and we're isolated and we're fed bullshit. And here we are fighting amongst ourselves constantly about the most ridiculous fucking shit there is to be fighting about. But every day on the freaking internet, you know what we see in Denmark? America sends for, um, destroyers and shit to Iran, you know? This has been year. I've been away for years and years. And every freaking day, there, if I open an internet, there is news about somebody that the USA is jacking up. Not Denmark not the UK, not Germany. Those, you know, those people hide behind the USA, those countries. They blackmail them into being with them. You either do that or you don't do business with us. That's how this game's run. Mm. And the weirdest part about it is all the manufacturing from the US has been cut back so deeply that they can't do anything. You can't you can't survive in America on American-made goods. Because America doesn't make anything anymore. Except war. And there's plenty of fucking war going on. And wherever there's war, guess where? Who's there? Huh? Mexico? Uh, the Philippines? You know, Burma? No. Chile? No, no. It's always, guess who? The U.S. So, when people get nasty about the U.S. being all over our fucking face every goddamn day of the fucking year... Well, don't be surprised. It's uh, If it was you, you'd understand it. Of course, I, I was there in the States, but I didn't give two flying fucks who was running what, how they were running it. Politics didn't interest me in the slightest. Still doesn't. But I'm just saying, I don't come from that, uh, oh, I'm going to vote this guy into power so he can fix all my fucking bullshit. Every fucking buddy is a fucking slave on this planet because... This is the design of the damn game. And then you look at somebody and you think, oh, they've got a million dollar house and oh, how wonderful they are. No, th th those are crumbs off the big kid's table. On these royalty fucking places, like here, like Denmark, Queen of Denmark. This land goes back a long time. These people are deep rooted in this big, deep game that they play. 
and they just move us around like a bunch of tools, you know, or pieces on a chessboard, if you will. Same fucking principle. Mm. But, you know, if things, if you want progress, you're, you're not going to be pleased with the outcome of progress because it's been hijacked by people that are making money off of it. So they're not doing the good thing for the best of everybody. They're doing the cheapest fucking thing they can do to get the biggest return on their investment. And that's what everybody praises. I mean, crying out loud. You know, if you want to survive, you work in it. If you don't want to survive, well, then find a way around it. I did. There's more than one way around the government if you really want to you know, be real about it. But then the government has many uses for people that don't have lots of money. So it's a catch-22. But if the fucking thing vanished tomorrow, I'd, I wouldn't miss none of this for 10 seconds. Just be glad it was all there. And fuck lump speaking. Good God. You know, you type what you want. I'm not going to be told how to type on the freaking internet. Beth Z did that with me too. You know, fuck. If, if you can't stand what I fucking type, don't read it. You got block. You don't need to read Cirque's crap. You can block it. She doesn't care. I wouldn't care. Block me too. I don't make no damn difference one way or the other. My opinion about any given topic on an internet chat, chat site is not changing shit. So, you know, if you're going to take it seriously and all to heart and get all angry about it, block me. That's what I'd do. Because the people that irritate me, that's what I do. If I get that personally attached to their freaking chatter, I block them. I don't need to be fighting with anyone over opinions. Stupid. You know? And each of us has our own demeanor, our own style, the way we do what we do. And you can't control what people do. That's what RLM is about in the first place is, you know, society controls the fuck out of everything we do, everything we say. Everything we hear, everything we eat, on and on and on. You know the list, right? So you, you get on a chat site, and the last thing you want to see is somebody telling you what to talk about or how to talk about it. It just makes the hole deeper. So if, you know, if you're not pleased, enjoy the argument and play that way or block us. doesn't bother me. And besides, moving to another country, what can be done, the great and knowing flash? Well, if I was there, which I was there, I never complained about it. So I don't know. I don't know what your problem is. Take all this government shit so fucking seriously. It's just something that's daily in my Danish wife's face in her home on the internet. Everything you open. There it is. USA. Fight, fight, fight. War, war, war. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, you can't avoid it. And if you want us to have a nice opinion about it. Hmm. Oh, there is an answer. Because I was talking with Vinny about this the other day. And he's going on about the Bundy thing. And I was trying to tell him he needs to uh, find, hmm, I guess, find other things to interject, blah, blah, blah. Well, Vinny's got his mind made up. He said, if you want an audience, there's a recipe to that. Me, I don't give a flying fuck about no damn audience. Give a shit. Um, I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you don't like me. This is a radio program about how I see the world. And the world is not... The, the world I'm talking about isn't the world inside of me. It's the one that I see when I look out. The one inside of me is pretty good. I don't have a problem with uh, life in any way, shape, or form that amounts to nothing more than being irritated by something I read. And that's my biggest fucking problem in life. Something I read on an internet site pisses me off. So what? Get over it. It doesn't. It doesn't last. It's not like, uh, like getting cut with a razor or something. You know, you're gonna bleed all over the place. It's just. It's one of those little. It's like being flicked in the ear. Some people can't take that, and some people can ignore it. Me, I can ignore it. Other people, maybe not so much. But that's what makes this fucking world so perfect. Is that everybody sees the exact same fucking problem in life. Okay, but they're the things that get their attention that they feel comfortable bitching about are immaterial. They don't even matter. And they're all connected to the original problem in the first place, which I think is commerce. Uh, commerce is the, the problem that we all share because people don't see uh, the abusive side of greed. You know, the, 
the obsession to own so fucking much and be so freaking wealthy. What the fuck is that about? And why do people support it? I don't know. I don't support it. I financially don't support it myself. As often as I am aware that the problem is there. But, you know, we're we're in the 21st century. Just about everything you hear from the internet you know, the news, whatever news you're getting, you're given, you know, uh, war news or political news or this fucking Trump guy or the freaking Queen of Denmark guy, whatever the fuck the, the press or the internet tells you about them, it's just as possible that they're lying about that, that it's possible that I'm sitting here and I could say my couch is green and my couch is not green, but I can say that. How are you going to ever know until you come into this room? And look at it to see that my couch is green or not. Still a couch. This is how I hear the government's lie. You know, they find something similar close to, or like global warming, so fucking far out there and just illogical that they can fuck enough people into believing it that they don't have to be telling the truth. So, goes back to my three-step plan. And all I'm going to ever, I'm going to go, like Vinny, I'm going to go down saying that if the Fed, the government's um, state, whatever the fuck these entities of fucking greed and corruption really are, uh, if they vanished, I wouldn't miss them. But I wouldn't replace it with nothing. It doesn't need anything. That's the whole fucking problem. If people were just left the fuck alone and all this shit vanished overnight, we'd be fine. We wouldn't know about anybody in Canada because we would be concerned with where we live. So, taking on the world's problems is a choice. That's what I think. I don't I don't take on the world's problems. I don't give a fuck about the world's problems. I don't care if they stop pumping oil tomorrow. It doesn't fucking make two sh- nothing. Don't care a bit. Okay? But that's me. And the rest of the world, who you know, they're all they're all financially tied to this freaking game. And when I was in the States, that I would uh, often meet people after I was an adult who were in uh, financial trouble with debt, could not figure out what to do to get out of the mess they were in. And then I, I would crumb into their life, blah, 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 and in, in a few months sometimes find a, a, a cure to the dilemma, sometimes in a few days or a few hours. It depended on the the core of the problem. But in the long run, everything that goes wrong in life is tied to finance. Even when you think about, you know, arguing with other people, in a sense, it's that competition, that dominance. I got to be right. You're fucking wrong. You know, you can be right all you like. I I don't care if you're right. What difference does it make? Like what we know about fractional reserve banking. So we know it. Does that stop the Federal Reserve Bank from using it on us? No. Not a bit. And there's links on the internet and there's people that get up there and they call them whistleblowers and ooh, I'm exposing this and ooh, I'm exposing that. And nothing changes for the better. Not ever, not once. And what what uh they were chitter chattering about and I muted my microphone. And I forgot to move off the thing where the red light's at to show me I muted. And I had to call Grim for a help because I was just um, flustered and not paying a complete attention to what I was doing. But the topics that we talk about, man, sure, these fucking things are huge. People are sensitive, you know. But, ah, eh, in the long run, it's all just a bunch of crap any fucking way. And what you support or don't support doesn't fucking matter. It's there. You see, the, the illusion is that you support it. And they prove that illusion by counting votes. Yeah, that may or may not exist. Look at all the corruption in voting over the, you know, however long they've been uh, trying to be accountable for voting. It's just, it's a joke. Especially when you get, when you're starting to cover places that, you know, have 300 million people or 80 million people or 6 million people. It's a terrible fucking way in the long run. It's a terrible way to live because we're all 
say it all the time, we're all herded into shit and put in little boxes and segregated and separated and you speak this way and they speak that way and you live here and those people are this and these people are that. And nah, the only thing I notice around here is I, I get, um, uh, I'm very aware of darker skinned folk in this very white rural place. So they get my attention when I see them and we nod at each other when we pass. It's the extent of that. But the attention, it's just when something's out of out of place as I am here when I speak, out of fucking pocket, man. People sometimes, they, their heads will turn if they've never seen me before. And I'm in the grocery store. Or the, maybe I'm getting a pack of smokes or whatever. Uh, they'll hear me talking. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> but it's, you know, it's not a... It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just this is their home. And if other people did what I did and do it the way I do it, I I don't think you'd have a problem with it. And life is good. You know, if you open up your, your mind to uh, what other things could happen. Because that's, that's why I say we're, we're all trapped. Trap, 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 trap. And my marriage is a trap by choice. I could have not married Circle. That was something I, I asked her to do. I thought, hey, this probably work out good for both of us. And she agreed. So there you go. And if she didn't agree with me, we would have never got started in the first damn place, let alone make it five years together. So what me and Cirque did, I think, is we just leave all the politics aside about her country or my country. You know, that's countries. Got nothing to do with me and her. You know, it's... It sounds like it does, but only because of the commerce. And we just decided that going through the Dan Danish commerce was better than her moving her to America and doing it there. So, hmm. you know, compromise. And by just by freaking, uh, I don't know, luck, her good judgment, what would you call it? You know, uh, she's afraid of America. So good judgment. I don't know. I think it's prejudice because I'm from there and I saw the good stuff. So when I think of America old days, you know, I remember it one way. And then when I think of America after 2000, nah, not so much anymore. And even before that, the late 90s were kind of starting to be a drag. Now, I was living in California when 9-11 uh, hit. So, mm, and it was crowded too. The valley was, the valley was getting big. People were... Uh, People wanted to live there, so I decided to go elsewhere by uh, somewhere in 202, 2002, I decided to go east, and uh, boy, did I go east. I didn't plan to come this far east. I don't know how to explain that. I guess uh, you just got to be willing to uh, pick up every fucking thing about you and just leave and go wherever you need to go, but people are bound by family and relationships like I am now. See, I can't do that anymore. That's why I say I'm not free anymore. Now I'm a slave to the marriage because it takes two to make a marriage. And some of us aren't so good at uh, living alone. I don't I don't want to be a bachelor. That, that didn't suit me. But I didn't really want to uh, pursue going back to the States and trying to fix anything. I was going forward when we're someplace other than the U.S. Anyhow. <laughs> and uh well I got to tell Cirque about it after I met her. But I was planning to go to Spain. Or maybe uh Croatia, that area, the southern southern Europe and maybe live on the beach for a while and get a tan, look like a brown guy. But life decided to put me in the cold instead. Uh I don't know uh um uh, whoa, stupid ass quote. Anyway, uh no, I was just rambling on about, you know, in a perfect world is a matter, of, it's a subjective subject because just because everything's falling apart outside of our marriage, you know, that doesn't mean the marriage is suffering. That's a personal choice. You separate church and state or you don't. And uh, marriage is a church, man. You promise somebody you're going to be this and that and do this and that, da, 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 da. That's some deep shit. But Americans like to play with it like it's a toy. Uh, Cirque, I don't think Cirque is fucking around any more than I am. I'm pretty much serious about all this shit. But on the radio or maybe uh, describing shit, I'm playful and 
joking and having a good time because none of this shit matters. You know, <laughs> the only thing that matters to me in my life is what is within reach. You know, what can I physically touch? Outside of that, I passed the popo today. Yep, and they were in a some kind of a different. It was a black car, dark blue, black. And Cirque was telling me they're like the investigator guys, you know, they, they take and take the lights off their car and go and they investigate shit. So anyway, the sad part about it is the, the cop, I'm passing him, I'm over by the veterinarian store and there's this little bendy kind of a turn here thing. And he's following along and he catches me, looks me in the eye, catches my eye. Didn't even bother. He goes back to right to the road like I wasn't even there. So uh, see, when you're... Hmm, when you're not even interesting to the police where you live, that that's a good sign. You know, <laughs> that that tells me that whatever I'm not doing to people is good. You know, I'm not doing anything to them, um, so they're cool with me. And that's all it takes to survive, you know, in this country that I've been uh, in for these number of years. Scotland, even though I spoke you know, the same language, Scottish people were, uh, where I lived, were very uh, redneck, very uh, racist. It was very strange. It was a small island, like island chain, but, the, the, you know, it's a small island. It wasn't very big. and But people were, you know, come there. There was a lot of traffic in and out and on, back and forth and such. But population was very small. And that's the way these pe people like to keep things. And here I am, an American in their, you know, little place. And they don't like it. Some of the outsiders didn't give a shit. But the islanders, most of the, they didn't care for that. So, depending on where you go is how people are going to treat you. But I never had a problem with, you know, physically with anybody there. So, mm, you know. Two and a half years, something would have gone wrong. It would have gone wrong, but nothing ever did. I was just trying to get help my mom get through, and I did. So after I did that, then it was you know time for me to do something different. <laughs> and life to me is like that, you know. Um, the marriage thing, not so much, but mm, I don't know. I don't commit myself to a lot of shit any freaking way. You know, I got a wife and a dog and a cat. And the rest of it, it's all connected to each other. You know, one thing goes with this and with that. And I, don't, I don't try to claim all that, you know, oh, this is all mine. What does that even mean? See, I've got way more important things to think about during my given day, <laughs> like how to finish this puzzle I'm working on. Or I um, oh, planted some new plants yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Couldn't even remember what day it was. But, yeah, pretty sure. Put out some flowers in the in the bricks and uh, shit like that. Boring, mundane life, right? So instead of you know, I traded in all uh, all that wild and wacky shit for a piece of quiet, and that worked for me. You know, except for the internet, people like to chatter on the internet, but in person, nah. People here just they just like to be friendly and and do their commerce or go to wherever they have a beer at the bar and just relax. There, There's no stress or tension. Five cars in a row is a traffic jam, so I don't know. But, you know, if people want bullshit, you know, give it to them. That's what we should do. And that's what they do because, like I said in the beginning, the progress must be promoted by the right guy. And think about the things that the people that you look up to are promoting and or that maybe not look up to but the people that are in powers of decision you know seats of decision powers of decision i'm a little stone now so anyway lost my uh order of word but yeah they can't be trusted to do what you want them to do they've proven that for hundreds of years you know oh the constitution you know that for one, right now, you don't have a freaking constitution that stands. So all your damn um, uh, amendments are all being stripped away one at a time right in front of you. They've been doing it over a course of years, like ripping a Band-Aid. You know, you tear off a little here and walk off for a day or two and do a little bit more until that adhesive won't even stick to the person. Then 
and then just falls off, but that might take a while. <laughs> well, that's how they do law. They write these freaking laws behind our backs, and they pass them behind our backs, and the press tells you one thing, and the reality is something completely different. And that's not a, a popular thing here. That's a popular thing from the U.S. And, uh, yeah, why the U.K.? Fuck the U.K., bunch of twats. I'm not real impressed with the U.K. or Germany. Fuck Germany, too. They, you know, or France, all these fucking, you know, these horrible countries, they've got their, uh, their greasy fucking banker paws all over each other. And they're, you know, they're jacking each other off in the fucking back of this limousine. And we see all this other shit. We see war. No, 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 no. That's just the people. The the leaders ain't fighting each other. Why, why didn't, uh, when Stalin and Roosevelt and what's his name, Churchill all met, why didn't somebody fucking punch the other guy in the fucking face? Why? Because they're all in the same club, that's why. And us idiots down here on the freaking bottom, okay, we're taught war, and fighting, and police, and order, and chaos, and you got all the information in the world to show you that everything that we get told, everything that they do to us is either a lie or it's bad for us, period. There is no question about it. You know, oh, but now we're going to upgrade the batteries for power for the cars. Well, first off, let me let me clue you. No, you're not. Some people are and some people aren't. It's actually just another clever divide and conquer by the powers that be, the, the decision makers. They know how to keep us fighting amongst ourselves. If there was just one simple rule to, to create a thing for a human being to eat or use as a form of, say, fuel or power or energy, transportation, and that one rule is whatever is best for all of us. I would venture to guess they would go with cannabis. And, oh, you're going to talk about that. It's still burning. Yeah, but it burns clean. And the good that cannabis cultivation does for the planet, you could probably repair a lot of the shit they've already done. Just like overnight, just slow these nuclear reactors down to you can shut them off, all of them. Just boop, and then just cover them in hemp for a hundred years. Probably fix it. But we have this, uh, you know, instant oatmeal generation that just came up behind the other instant oatmeal generation that came up before the first instant oatmeal generation. Now, I come from the first one, so I know how to drink water out of the garden hose. You know, things like that were common when I was a kid. And if you were walking down the damn street and it's 90 degrees and you walked up to somebody's garden hose to get a drink of water, they wouldn't, they'd say, oh, okay, just getting water, cool, have, you know, have a good day, kid. They wouldn't attack you for fucking with their shit. It was a different world. And here we are now, jeez. People, the, the movies indicate that people are afraid to answer their freaking door because they might be getting, you know, a, letting a psycho in to murder them. This is how you see each other now. This is what we've been uh, conditioned over many years to accept as normal. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> uh, John Wayne Gacy. And, and think about all those killer dealers were only in a certain period of time. They're all gone now, right? And there's never been anything to replace them. I, wonder, I always wondered why about that. Why did one generation bring up such bizarre behavior and then it just stopped D didn't continue and it's entertaining as far as wow to like to watch these uh, TV shows that they create to show you how they made the team that caught this you know, this sick fuck guy blah 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 and uh, I go a step further and wonder if man they I read about this uh, government shit and these weirdos that do uh, sacrifices and they kill people and da 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 and then all of a sudden for years you have all these murders and then of course they're all done by one lone guy all by himself while he holds down a job and you know maintains a, a regular life to the public but he's murdering women at night okay hmm seems a little strange to me for somebody to you know to fit into society so well and not be 
considered a weirdo by somebody else that they encounter. You know, these guys are always so normal. And to me, there's something more to it than what I see and what I hear and what I read, but I can't explain it. But I'm going to take it for face value, and I'm going to go against the Fed and say, well, part of it's probably true, but not all of it. So when you when you have a known fucking liar telling you a story, how can you believe the whole story? I mean, I don't. I, maybe there's other people that blindly follow, but... Uh, no, it's like this Trump character. When, when it first started, it was obvious because, you know, Trump wasn't a politician. <laughs> right, but look at all the shit that he did with the help of politics and politicians and bankers to get where he got. So it was as though Trump was not going to fail no matter what he did. And sadly, over his business life, it's all he did was fail. He's the worst fucking uh, financial person on the planet. He's got three bankruptcies and a fourth pending. And <laughs> claiming he's got billions of dollars and this, that, and the other. But everything he's tied to is scandalous and disgusting, basically. But that's the quality of politicians. That's what you're going to get. You just had another. The wiener got loose today. See? You know, they released the wiener on the public. And uh, he's free to roam the world one more time. And, ta-da! See? Because he paid his uh, debt to society. And I think, wow, no he didn't. He's a lying freaking weirdo. He upset a whole fucking shitload of people doing whatever he did. And if they put him in jail, then uh, just finding him wasn't enough. They had to embarrass him on top of it. But he's out again, so guess what, you know? And even if this idiot is banned for life from ever doing politics again, there's going to be weirdos out there waiting in line to deal with him and, you know, do business. So it's not the players that's fucked up in this game. It's the game. <laughs> Say it over, over and over and over. doesn't matter who's in power or who's in charge. The rules are the problem. You know, this illusion of freedom. I read to this day people still harp on this fucking Constitution shit. Where are you going to use a United States Constitution? What court in America, if you know, I know the answer to this. If you don't know the answer, you're going to be really freaking pissed. <laughs> if you don't know, because I know. There's a lot of people that know. Rob Warwick knows. Grim knows. Uh, I don't know about the... Mm, there's a few people that know. Anyway... So, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so you know something. And that's what I mean about the chat room stuff. People want to get, uh, take all this shit to heart. What you know, it's all in, it's all subject to uh, your personal, <laughs> your personal life, not mine. You know, I don't know what you know. And then when we disagree with each other about shit, then people put you in a box. Oh, you don't believe the world's round. You must be a flat earth nut. Well... No, that's not really a good explanation either when you when I think about it. I mean, but then again, and then there you go. And the arguing starts. Arguing over an opinion about something you can't see from where you're standing. Because the other person will always, oh, I have proof. Uh, okay, let's see your proof. And then they show you their proof, and you might like some of their proof. You know, some of their proof might even make a little bit of sense to you. But in the overall thing, you go, wait a minute. No, nah, I don't like that. So, well, how I interpret that, I don't like that, is, well, that's not proof. And that's probably, maybe I'm the only one that does it that way. I don't know. Am I doing the proof thing wrong? Am I supposed to believe it because I saw it in print or I saw a picture of it because I saw Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> you know, uh, Hannibal Lecter, ring a bell with anybody? Uh, you know, <laughs> no, it's It's fiction. You know, they've managed to um, make science fiction. Actually, we're living in this fiction, you know, based on bullshit science. And if you really want to do, you know, any looking into it, uh, I don't know how you, I can't define how you get on the road that I'm on that I, other people agree with. Because there's a few out there. Beetle, B, 
Beetle understands pretty much what I think. Um, and me and Ha, huh, we seem to be understanding each other. And well then, we, we see life from two different perspectives. So it looks like disagreement, which is like arguing. But no, it's just you see it that way, I see it this way. That's the end of it. That's what it should be. Is that? That's how I see it and that's how you see it. But we don't do that because this internet thing is on a wavelength that somehow affects our judgment calls, I think. I wonder how deep into the res you know, the, the vibrations and, and the and what is that? Resonance, frequency. How how deeply these things really go that they can be controlled in ways that we're not we're not collectively uh, seeing it that way. We're seeing different versions of the same thing. I see this as a total control. You see that as a total control. And then a third thing, nobody sees nothing about it at all. It's just a thing. So being in agreement seems to have a lot of weight in the typewritten world, or in the verbal world. But when you disagree with somebody when you're speaking to them, it seems to me that it's, it's a lot easier to sit down and, and work things out where typing is more strict and rigid. And once you've said something, that's it, you said that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there you go. So, mm, I'm not going to take all this shit to heart. You know? It's not worth it. It will not improve the quality of my day You know, to uh, upset myself with other people's opinions about things that are out of everybody's control any damn way. So, but the goal for them is to keep us fighting. Fight, 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 fight. Win, 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 win. Blame, 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 blame. And then when you blame the U.S. for anything, then the people of the U.S. take it as a personal fucking insult. When, wow, you know, no, it's this fucked up government that represents you. And that's the problem is you have this government that represents you. Not me. Cirque does. Um, me, I just borrowed it for a while, you know. Uh, this is as good a place to be as any. I've I've never been any more comfortable in in life. I've you know I think certain times in America were the same as they are for me now. When I was you know younger and days gone by, in other countries, I really enjoyed traveling when I was uh, in my thirties. Eh. In the in the twenties, it was mostly the U.S. All of the as much of it as I could go to, and uh, in my thirties, I started to travel. Well, late twenties, I started to travel internationally, and I didn't leave a wake of death and destruction behind me. You know, I just tried to leave the place where I went the same way that I found it. But never did a um, never did none of that Americanizing. People were English. I was in England. Then fuck it. They're English. And the funny thing about it is the life that I lived, politics never uh, played any part in the relationships that I've had with people. Friendships um, with with guys in, in England weren't based on what country I was from or not from. It was about other shit, you know, and females, they weren't any more impressed with uh, anything I had to say or do because I was from America or or were particularly not you know because of where I was from didn't seem to matter that that part of the of life had uh I don't know I just I guess it it was an avoided thing I was a bar drinker in those days you know I spent a lot of time hanging out in the pubs and shit so the people that I met the last thing that they were into into at the time was uh politics and shit like that we were just like artists and musicians and having fun people you know, people that went out at 3 o'clock in the morning to the After Hours Club, you know, on some other thing to go have a few beers and listen to music. In fact, one night, I probably shouldn't tell this one, but I'm going to. Don't listen, Cirque. Well, I'm in this club. All right, I'm waiting in line in this club. And I felt somebody tapped on my arm from behind me. I turn around. It's a little, little girl. And she's trying to t ask me something in French with, or in English with a French accent and I really couldn't understand what she was saying too good but I guessed and well, in the long run her English was as bad as my French but she grabbed me on the shirt sleeve and we went and sat down on the floor in the middle of the damn club and she opens up a, a kit to roll a spliff 
So here I am in in London at, at about four o'clock and three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, sitting on a dance floor with people air all fucking packed everywhere, dancing all around us, and we lo- we rolled up and smoked a spliff right in the in the club, and nothing happened. You know, that that was the exciting part of it is I smoked with some girl I met in line waiting to get into a club. And, you know, that was that. But uh, to uh, to do that now, are you kidding? Well, there's cameras everywhere filming every fucking thing you do. And you can't go here because you're not that religion. And you can't go there because you're not this religion. And we live in this illusion of freedom. and. It, Freedom's subjective to the slave that's listening to the story, you know, because there's no fucking way that anybody's going to ever convince me that I am free in this life to do what I want. And when I have been free in, in life to do as I pleased, uh, wasn't please, uh, didn't please other people, mostly family. Oh, we thought you would do different things than this. But I never got a, a greed bone, you know, never developed that wealth and, oh, I got to have a, a hundred suits, fuck all that shit. You know, uh, even in my greediest of days, it was within the bounds of, you know, what I felt like doing, you know. Uh, if I didn't want to work so hard, I would have less stuff, see. It was all relative to my, uh, what I wanted at any given time. And other people, what they seem to do is bind themselves to debts. Like me and Cirk got the house for like, I don't know, I guess it's 20, 30 years, something like that. And that's cool with me because I'm not going any fucking where without her. And, uh, <laughs> but that mentality, see that to me, that supersedes money and uh, government and all that shit. They're going to have to split us up. It wouldn't be, it would be terrible. No, 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 no. But that doesn't happen. So, you know, that's that bad side of life that you accept it's a possibility, but yeah, what what are the fucking chances of the government going all berserko and deciding to break up a, a marriage? You know, unless you do something to irritate the state, the state just leaves you the fuck alone. It's a very simple life. Now, where I'm from, and the reason we get all upset about America and such is, you know, I've got family and, and such friends out there that are still living there to this day in the States. Some And a lot of the people on the Real Liberty Media live in the States. So we're, you know, we're worried for you in the long run. And I guess it's a hard thing to type, but the way the government treats you there through our, our way of seeing it, things aren't looking too good, you know. Wow. And then they throw you a bone here and there. They legalize weed. Legalize. And just shift the fucking... They move the cup from the left side to the right side. It's still punishable by law and all that other crap. So what the fuck changed? Oh, well, now we can smoke it. Well, how much can you smoke? And then there you go. You're, you're within the confines of, of your freedom. You're allowed to... That's not freedom. That's just the same shit we got here. The difference is the enforcement, I believe. Because I see people smoking hash on the streets here in Freddytown sometimes. It's not a daily, constant thing either. I mean, once in a, in a while, maybe, when, I don't know, if I paid attention, it's probably like once a month. I'll pass somebody that's, you know, got a spliff. And it's so common that, yeah. But in Copenhagen... I don't think it was even that big a deal there because we were right next to Freetown. And sometimes I'd, I'd get a rolled one for the road and <laughs> and walk back to the apartment. It was about a three-mile trip on foot. And the view was just fucking incredible. Across this little river and had a nice bridge. You could look off to the to one side and see where me and Sir got married in this real fancy place. Well, not fancy place, but it's a business... Uh, famous building that kind of thing and (laughs) anyway so i would sit on a park bench by the water very little foot traffic around right here in a downtown and just sit there and smoke my half of a spliff and if people walked by they either smiled or asked to hit it but nobody ever gave me any shit about smoking while i've been in denmark and uh but I don't make a spectacle out of it. I'm not trying to get anyone's attention. If they notice, it's because they're looking. And 
<laughs> and here we are in Freddy Town. Ah, I'm not so much outside smoking here. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to push it because of the American thing. Somebody doesn't like me. They could find that as a reason to do something about me. So you know, don't fuel the fire. Is my point. And as long as I just behave myself as I'm supposed to, expected by the state, then everything's you know fine. And the last thing that I'd ever fucking do is get involved with the state for finance, you know, like no, that's no, not no, 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 bye, bye, bye. So that's the that's the thing that just uh, cements the deal. I stay out of their pocketbook, don't cause any trouble in their, you know, on their soil while I'm here, and that's all they want. So instead of making a big deal out of oh he left and no. I don't know how to explain. See, that's the part I can't explain because uh, life, when uh, when I was settled in the States, life took me out of the States with who I was settled with, and then it fell apart. So, hmm, I don't know. I don't know what to make of any of this shit. You know, I didn't want to leave America from the beginning of it, and I got talked into it, and then I did it. <laughs> and like everything else, I'm very extreme. So, <laughs> when I do shit, you know, I'm not like uh, Trump. I got to do the be the best. I know the good words. I fuck all that. I just give it my best is what I'm saying. You know, dollar signs are meaningless to me. Doesn't impress me what, what you have uh, as much as it, it impresses me on what you don't have. <laughs> because the wealth in life is the freedom from the shit that, you know, binds us. And unless you make your prison comfortable, like me and Cirque did, well, then you're going to feel the burn, and you know you're going to hear the chains and the rattling and the guards. It's going to be miserable. So hmm, it's hard to live this way if you don't know how to. I suppose it's. Uh, I think it's something that you you look, you trip over it. You know, you learn it like finding out about the straw man on the internet. I'd heard about straw man, blah blah blah, straw man arguments, but I was not a legal beagle. So I didn't give a fuck. But all the foundation, all that shit was laid for me. For when I did need it, I would have it. And fortunately for me, <laughs> the people that told me the shit that led led me to where I'm at today were all right. You know, I don't have a, I don't have a grievance with the government or with the government with the people. I have a grievance with the the state, the government. You know, the very thing that Cirque tolerates because hers is like I say, mine's was barbed wire and it would cut and make you bleed and it was fucked and here it's loose rope so you got the illusion of freedom to a point so you're not a totally uh, miserable all the freaking time you know there's a lot of happy people uh, that i see all when i go do my commerce and shopping around for whatever crap i might want to get and when i'm out in the street um I don't know, that calm and peaceful small place thing. I think Mary and Grimm got it. I was listening to Grimm the other day. Might have been on uh, Freakers. Might have been on Boss of the Wall he did or uh, some comment he made about the town he lives in is okay. That, you know, it's fine. And that's what I'm saying. You know, it's just, I guess because of Cirque, I've got the that extra enthusiasm about living that some people don't have because things aren't going the way they want them to. And I understand that. I Shit, I didn't want to go to Scotland. And I fucking argued about it for months. said, I don't want to do it. And then when I gave in, then it took six months to do all the damn documents and paperwork and trips and planning and all this shit. So it was a long, long thing set up to do it. And uh, once I started it, I was going to finish it, whatever finishing it was. And finishing it was, I got stranded in Scotland. <laughs> come back or don't come back. I, I, I don't know. There was not, so I just went, okay. Instead of uh, doing all that fighting and going back and getting all my stuff, I just left it all. Fuck it all. I said, fuck it. There ain't nothing here I can't replace in the long run. So I stayed in Scotland. Now, <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, five rooms, six rooms, whatever the big this house is. I don't, all the rooms got stuff in it. So, you know, Carlin was right. A house is just a place to keep your stuff. And if you don't have any stuff, then you don't really need a house. You can live in an apartment or something, I suppose. I did plenty of that. Motels and apartments when I was in my 20s. 
when I was bumming around the world just learning shit and trying out jobs and experiencing life. But it seemed to me a lot of other people were, they were doing what I'm doing now is getting married and settling down and shit. And I tried that in my 30s. It didn't didn't do a very good job of it. It was a, not a good thing. But uh, shit happens, you know, and instead of, going all gay and hating women I just went okay next <laughs> uh, maybe not the best topic to, to use but the point you know, the point is no matter how disappointed I get in anything whatever replaces it there's a 50-50 chance it'll be better and better or worse but you know it's all subjective you can you can make the best out of anything if you have a good um a good outlook in life and you know how to see the world the way you know the world wants <laughs> the world wants you to be a negative fucking uh, argumentative nasty rude prick that's what the world wants you to do so hmm, how do you fight that and it's obvious to me that it is maybe other folk that ah, they don't see things that way who is to know um uh, because you can tell me you see something a certain way and type on a screen, but just because you wrote that, see, I'm so unindated in the written lie that sometimes I wonder, <laughs> you know, maybe, uh, maybe you're not telling me the truth. Maybe you're making up a story, you know. I'd like to see a video of uh, some guy going into a Starbucks and arguing with a liberal. But we know that doesn't happen. It's just a fantasy, you know. Now maybe, hey, there you go. Maybe that's how I could be interpreted that I'm living in this fantasy life. And uh, well, I think you make your own life. Uh, hmm. You're. How, what could you possibly be uh, held to? That's a phys, you know that's a mental idea. What mental ideas are capable of holding you? Well, I would say the threat of violence would work. Hmm. That's usually a really good one. Oh, the intimidation of being overpowered by a bully like the state. Well, if you don't do this, that, and the other thing, we're going to lock your happy ass up and put you in jail. But you know, they write it out like... Well, you didn't pay your bills or whatever the fuck it is. You know, you come up short on your bills and you don't have enough money. So all of a sudden, you need to be punished. Yet, now here I was thinking about this the other night too, in a perfect world. You know, I don't believe the finance thing is real. I've been saying this for a long time. I'll give you another example of why I don't believe it's real. It's just a story. And the people that are at the top are in a group. And that's because... Have you ever heard of Soros Bill hmm? 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 or Bill Gates um, State? No. Or County of Bill, Ga Bill Gates City? What, what I mean is, a billion dollars should be enough money to incorporate a fucking uh, parcel of land somewhere and put in the freaking best of everything and make it up to date and just fucking beautiful and environmentally friendly, and all this other shit, but none of these fucking billionaires are going to ever lift a finger to make a step toward that direction, because if they ever did that, then they'd lose control of all the fucking slaves in the cities they got, and people are kept in the dark about the future is, oh, we're going to space, here's another one, uh, Ann Weldon was all over that today, SpaceX or some shit, now we're on a planet right now, okay, where people claim there's not enough of anything to supply everybody, so we're going to give 1% of the whole fucking population total control of everything, and the rest of you can fight over what we're willing to give up, and that's how we live as a collective, because someday you could be a billionaire too. And I think it's a bunch of shit because there's so many of these egomaniacs and the best they can ever fucking do is come up with their own airline or a fucking space program. Why not a city of a uh, brand new city with everything brand new start from fucking dirt and work up and do everything in hempcrete, you know, up to date and modern. No, no, no. Deliver the electricity 
on a freaking proper cycle instead of this 50 and 60 bullshit we get. But no, that's not, see, that's not what Common John and Joe know. They don't know much about any of that. I didn't know much about any of that. Had no reason to even be interested in any of that. The only, probably the only thing that uh, caught my mind, caught, got me into this direction was I was trying to take care of somebody in a wheelchair and I had no clue what to do. So I was looking for, you know, online, figured out, hey, maybe some of these people might know. And I found things that I needed to know and it worked. So it kept my interest. And I found a, a <laughs> little site called World Truth. And now here we are today. But all these things that uh, they're all connected to each other and they're not connected to each other. So mm, I got the choice to remember it with a fun fondness. You know, I can think of the World Truth Days and I can either complain because, oh, this went that way and that went this way. Or I can be glad because everything that happened over there got me to where I'm at at this particular point in life now. And all the things before that, blah, 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 blah. see, that's how it goes. But I think that the road, you know, life gives you choices and some people don't have the interest in taking opportunity when it comes because it doesn't fit their lifestyle. And I don't have, I don't have a particular lifestyle to be concerned with so that I can make a decision about what I want to do with my future. And now I've made a decision about it, so I've got, I've got something to do. I'm not at that stage in life anymore looking for nothing. I got everything I need. If life got any better, I'd, I don't really know how it could. I mean, it could get worse if my health starts to, you know, to show it's fading. But outside of that, things are fine. And uh, like me and Vinny were talking about, um, if I, I was trying to explain to him that I see what he's doing as in the long run, a very important thing. The Bundy thing is huge. It's bigger than anything I've ever been involved in, in my whole life. And he was right in the friggin' middle of the whole thing. So, 20 years from now, his voice is going to be an important voice in it. And today, <laughs> he's got all the shit fresh in his mind. And uh, poor Vinny's got some uh, arthritis, too. So all this typing and working and talking and everything's giving him a little bit of physical grief. And, you know, he wants to do it before he's my age, I guess. Too old to... to type anymore because <laughs> uh, his poor hands are giving out on him the old bastard so you know there's there's things people don't want to hear i don't know um when i don't want to hear vinnie i just don't play him uh, and then there's other times where i'm all over it i want what's what's on vinnie's mind and then sometimes like uh, tonight he had something else to do so he didn't come help me out with in a perfect world but see that's what makes the world perfect is uh, Vinny has something else to do, and he said, hey, I'm not coming. I'm going to go to a thing and enjoy some music. Going, oh, okay, cool. Not, just didn't let me know. See, there's a big difference in, in communicating. Hey, I got something come up. It's it's kind of uh, unusual. I want to go do it. There you go. But, man, see, I've had my encounters with people that just didn't show, didn't hear from. That was the end of that. What? <laughs> and, uh, that's okay with me. I mean, I'm not particularly hurt by that. I kind of thought of that as, wow, now I have to deal with you anymore. But that's the see. It's a reciprocal thing. Whoever's leaving you is doing you a favor in the long run, but you don't know it at the time it happens. That I think that's you know part of the game. Uh, we're taught shit, and I say this a lot, but it's hard to define. So I just go with everything. Uh, we're taught shit from earth, you know, early ages that just completely fucking wrong and don't make any sense. And one of the things, I forget where I was listening to it at, but the inoculations, good God. Uh, now they're starting to realize that when you inject somebody with an inoculation, say for uh, measles, you're giving that person the measles so their body will build an immunity against the measles blah 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 but while that person's sick they've got the fucking measles so when they when they encounter you if you're susceptible to measles and they have it da ding guess what 
you, you, if you're not inoculated, well, you're going to get it, possibly, if you react to it, right? But then on the other hand, if you're already inoculated, you're already sick too. So they're starting to notice that people that uh, are inoculated, and they're reporting it this way, are getting people who are not inoculated ill. See, that's how that truly works. But you, how do you... How do you explain? I've seen some pretty bad videos of common man in the street and his uh, ability to understand the simplest of shit. And for whatever reason, I blame it on the, the education system. I guess they took it out of the school system or something because I have vague memories of geography. I can read a map. I mean, I know where all the countries are. Not all of them to this day because a lot of countries have changed names and uh, there's been countries that split and moved and whatnot, but there's like 214 countries, and if you tell me what it's called, I'll find it on the map. And there's people that can't do that. Well, why can't they read the freaking name on a map? What? Oh, see, I don't have that uh, that limitation to understand whatever makes somebody not see what I can see so easy. So. What I was taught to do, so to speak, and it's, I'm not going to say I do it, but I I remember the egging me on to uh, make the guy that doesn't know something feel stupid, because um, at a certain age in, in the education thing, I was very competitive and successful quite a bit of it. So, but it was really young; it didn't last very long, like a year and a half or so. But I gave it up like nine. Nine and a half years old, I went, nah, started to really notice that it was, uh, eh, it wasn't really what I wanted. Whatever that meant to me at the time, it's the only thing I can really say to explain it. It's something about being bullied like that and, and uh, encouraged to make other people feel bad. What didn't make me feel good. And I stayed a nerd in school at that level through a, a, another year or so where the teacher, he knew I wasn't stupid. But he couldn't get me to, to produce anything higher than a C. And it kind of upset him. But it still picked me out of all the kids there were to choose from to run the projector and the weekly thing we had in this uh, dormitory, like uh, the cafeteria. And they just uh, heard all the kids in there at once play a film. And I was the, nor the nerd that pushed the buttons. But then again, right? See, that was the last year. And then after that, I started to change and, and go into this mode I'm in still to this day this uh whatever you guys say is bullshit I don't believe nothing you fucking tell me I don't know why I don't know how uh but my history shows it you know m my present <laughs> the present results I have are definitely a uh, direct result of wow fuck you and your fucking rules well, what's the minimum you know I'll do the very minimum that I have to to get through, and that's it. I'm not putting any effort into, uh, I don't put the effort into, like, being a member of Denmark as I do into being a member of Cirque's family, and her family treats me good. They were over here the other day. <laughs> what were they doing? Oh, they were making up. The, the boy has Big 15 coming up or some kind of, uh, it's like a coming of, something anyway the mexicans do it too i think they do it with the girls can't remember but he's got this big party and the women were making um food for this party all like four hours of cooking it was just funny as hell but when the when the in-laws come over i never i never felt uh threatened upset or uncomfortable so see i got I got whatever I got, and I don't look at it in terms of shit like deserve and all that. You, you get what you give in life. and But some people, you got to remember, some people see your best effort as a disaster or something shitty. Uh, like try giving a, non, a non-smoker a joint and see what happens. You know, it's like, what the fuck are you, what, you're one of those potheads? Oh, get away from me, you know, because of the the stories oh pot's bad and all that kind of shit i remember people treating me like that hey you got a you got a marijuana cigarette you dirty pot smoker fuck <laughs> but you know that's that's life
life is chock full of all kinds of weird shit that you don't you don't plan on it i don't think uh so i've minimized the ability life has to upset me to just the internet the internet is the only thing in the world that has the ability well besides Cirque, but Cirque doesn't do it on purpose i don't think but sir can upset me i guess but she doesn't now, every once in a blue moon we disagree to a certain level that's uncomfortable but eh, but once or twice a year i think is i think twice in a year is our record so far and as i get older i can't I'm starting to go i can't even remember the you know she's just uh cirque go figure anyway yeah tonight in a perfect world brought uh a lot of things about my my marriage to circa because uh takes two people to to make a you know a partnership in life and not everybody wants a partnership in life some people are very comfortable being solo like grimner grimner's a lone wolf of uh, moriarty new mexico by god and country and he's out there in his backyard with his pitchfork growing vegetables to prove it. But, yeah, I mean, that's why I take what Grimm says about himself. that He likes being where he's at. He likes being uh, unencumbered by the responsibility of a partner. I understand that. I've lived that way before myself. But I didn't enjoy it as much as I do uh, coupling. I'm one of those that likes to have a woman partner. Go figure. Hey, Cowboy Tech. He's saying something about hemp on the RLM chat. Yeah, we got... Oh, I haven't done this in a while either. Uh, to my hardcore 20 out there, I've seen bit shoot sometimes to get a few people listen uh, that aren't on the RLM, obviously. So, to them folk, I would say to you, if you feel uh, particularly generous and you want to support the crap I do... Send Grimner some money at reallibertymedia.com. And he uses it to run the site. So, you know, all the, all the equipment's up to date and all the crap that needs to be done gets done and all the bills get paid. This is in no way a for-profit business in case you're curious. But, you know, it's a, uh, it's a chat site. So every, every little bit helps the guy that is, you know, carrying the weight of keeping it going. And i like to remember to tell you that so I can beg you to give him some dough. And <laughs> that's about that's about it for uh, begging for money stuff. Let me let me see if I can't find a topic that I didn't do the other day because I'm looking at old notes. Uh oh, I don't think I wrote anything new, but I did uh, I did find a link. I might want to read it. I'm not so sure. Let me see what. Hmm. I'm kind of split on this one because the topic is uh, the title of it i know what i'll do i will let this thing catch up and stop it before it blasts off into your ears and then i'll i'll post a copy on up oh, there we go okay paused i'll post a copy of this on the uh, real liberty media.com chat and uh i think i'm going to read some of it i don't know if i read the whole thing but i can't remember where i got it from either Got it off of minds earlier today, but it was a uh, reminiscent of a an American uh, day, <laughs> and this this is probably a good example of uh, why all the anger about America too. So I'm gonna go with reading this to you folks. I'm uh, I'm getting lined up here. It's called uh, 35 Years Ago Today, but this is from May 13th. Now, uh, Police firebombed a neighborhood in Philly, killing women and children. And it was written by John Vibes for, oh, I don't know what the thing is. Well, anyway, it's the, it's a free, the freethoughtproject.com. Okay, and it's called, and it's uh, starting my story here. Now, this is also, it's a, it's a story-ish kind of thing. It's true. But the guy was trying to be funny, I think, when he wrote it. I read a little earlier. Since the beginning of time, there has been a constant struggle between people who want to be free and those who seek to control them. It is an un unending war that, the, that rages 
just beneath the surface of civilized society, waiting to reach a boiling point where violence can erupt on the streets between police and citizens, or the oppressor and the oppressed. Now, I want to say this, too, as people talk all this citizen shit, think about this. That said, between police and citizens. So that means that police ain't citizens to me. Maybe it means something different to you. Okay, back to the story here. Since our history is passed down by those who seek to control us, this struggle is framed in a way where the oppressors are always the innocent victims and the oppressed the senseless terrorists, when in reality, the opposite is usually true. Nowhere in this situation more obvious than in the media coverage and cultural myths surrounding the American Civil Rights Movement. Police would regularly raid the offices and homes of civil rights leaders, shooting first and asking questions later. In fact, many civil rights leaders did not make it through the 1960s and 70s alive, and most of the original Black Panthers were either killed by police or imprisoned for life. Yet this aspect of the situation was entirely absent from the media reports of the day and is even rarely discussed in modern times. One of the worst acts of police terrorism against the civil rights movement occurred on May 13, 1985, when the Philadelphia Police Department bombed the homes of a black libertarian group called MOVE, killing 11 people, five of whom were children. MOVE was a Philadelphia-based organization formed by civil rights leader John Africa in 1972, with the goal of creating a radical change in society by creating communities that lived according to their own rules and values, instead of under the authority of the federal government. MOVE crowdfunded the purchase of multiple adjacent homes in the city to build their headquarters, where members of the group lived communally and planned protests. Unfortunately, it was not long before they caught the attention of local police, who were threatened by their philosophy and their presence in the community. Most mainstream coverage of this story highlights the fact that neighbors were unhappy with the living conditions in the compound, and it is often claimed that the police only became involved because they received complaints from concerned citizens who were uncomfortable that such a radical activist group was in their backyard. However, it is important to point out that this was during a time of great social tension when racists would often use police as a tool of violence against their darker-skinned neighbors. In 1978, MOVE had their first major standoff with police after the city attempted to forcibly remove them from their homes. When police attempted to enter the house to take people away, a shootout erupted, and Philadelphia Police Officer James... Ramp. Oh, wait. James J. Ramp was caught in the crossfire and killed. Well, one down a few thousand ago. Members of MOVE have insisted all these years that Ramp was actually killed by one of his fellow officers in a case of friendly fire, which is an extremely plausible explanation considering that Ramp was shot in the back of the neck. Seven other police officers, five five firefighters, three MOVE members, and three bystanders were also injured. Despite the fact that there was no evidence trying any particular person to the single bullet that killed Ramp, nine members of MOVE were each sentenced to a maximum of 100 years in prison for third-degree murder. One person was killed with one bullet, and nine people were sent to jail for their entire lives. After the conviction of these political prisoners, who would eventually come to be known as the Move Nine, the organization understandably became more militant and radical. Then, in 1981, the group established a new headquarters across town at 6221 Osage Avenue in the Cobbs Creek area of West Philadelphia. In other, in, wait, in, in addition to rebuilding their commune and staging protests, 
move also set up a bullhorn outside their headquarters that would regularly blast anti-government messages out to the community <laughs> fucking insane in 1985 after years of legal conflict wait time out here folks uh i got something coming in oh okay sorry about that distraction uh that was my wife sending me a little click uh Outside or whatever, you know, 1980. Uh, ju- ah. hmm. Mayor W. Wilson Good and Police Commissioner Gregor J. Sambor classified move as a terrorist organization and planned a full scale raid of their headquarters. This time, police fully evacuated the entire neighborhood before moving in on the compound. There were nearly 500 police officers gathered at the scene. Ludicrously, ferociously well-armed, flak jackets, tear gas, SWAT gear, 50, uh, 50 caliber and 60 caliber machine guns, and an anti-tank machine gun for good measure. Deluxe guns were pointed from fire... Tr- Deluge guns... It was a G. It's a <laughs> were... I'm a big gun lover here. Were pointed from fire trucks. The state police had sent a helicopter... The city had shut off the water and electricity for the entire block, and we'd come to learn there were explosives on hand. One witness described the events to NPR. Now, you get my point here, people? I mean, that's that's a... I'm I'm almost to the end of whatever's in the text, so I guess I'll go with it. Okay. Back to the story. After a standoff lasting several hours, police gave move a 15-minute warning to surrender around 6 a.m., and they were met with gunshots from inside the building. That is when police returned fire, unloading over 10,000 rounds at the MOVE headquarters over the course of 90 minutes. Next, the police dropped a bomb on the building from a helicopter, igniting multiple homes on fire. Okay. Wow. I mean, eh, there you go. That's enough of that from from me. But, uh, wow. See, in a perfect world... Cirque's out there doing that in the fire. Hey! So, uh, anyway, she messed me up on my, what you call it here, my wire, but she's out in the back doing stuff to the wood. Anyway, so, uh, now that caught my eye the the day it came up because, uh, you know, it was, <laughs> wow, 35 years ago. And, that was a long, long time back. You know, things things have not changed since those days. That, I think that's what uh, that's what the disagreeing about on the RLM before the radio was about is this is this is where I'm from. This is what people do. This is the police doing what they do. You know, in a place they call free, and you're only as free as you're allowed to be, and that, that's the point that nobody wants to adhere to. I'm only as free as I'm allowed to be. I mean, but then again, I'm not a freaking lunatic wanting to, you know, change the freaking world, and I'm going to build a compound in the middle of a fucking city for attention, and then bullhorn to all the people around me, all my ideas. What, what kind of... No, this is what the radio's for. But we didn't have this. We had um, <laughs> shortwave, I suppose, back there, and CB, but we didn't have anything like this in the day. So... But then again, I'm not that insane. I don't I don't want to lead anyone any fucking where. Hell, I give Cirque a hard time about, I don't want to go. You go. You want to go, you go. I, I don't feel like going. So if I don't want to do something, that's it. Of course, the same works for her. And I try to do that with people. You know, If you don't want to do something, don't fucking do it. Usually the reason you, you don't want to do something is it, it's either you're not good at it or doing it's just a drag. Which makes makes the person doing it not good at it. When you're not comfortable doing something that's mundane, the end result is usually terrible. You know, the difference between somebody asking you to wash your car and you wanting to wash your car. You know, if somebody else tells you, hey, your car looks like, oh, well, like a, you could use a bath or in your driveway sport. Well, you want to tell them to mind their own fucking business. But... You know, if you got up in the morning and you looked at your car and said, wow, you sure could use a bath, then you go wash it. Then it's, see, that's the what, what I'm talking about. Every freaking program I do is the difference between 
wanting to do something and being told to do something it's it's the it's the wavelength that it's that it's taken on the physical life and the mental life are separate they're they influence each other but they they run out they run simultaneously one one kind of depends on the other you know your uh all your motor skills and shit and you bump into that table and you feel that pain well that's the point you that's your warning sign to back up and don't go any further <laughs> you stubbed your toe stop stop fix your foot and without the you know without all the reactions to these things well worse things could come i mean if you didn't know you stubbed your toe and then you broke it and, and then it's all broken what would you do how would you find out? I mean, the the point I'm trying to make is that even the shitty things in life have a reason for happening at to some point. Then if if you keep doing the same thing over and over and getting that same, and then don't do that. That's what I do. Unless you're Hansel and, and I like fucking with you because good God, Hansel's he's he's a blast. Today he was going off on the Beatles, um, <laughs> John Lennon. You know and whatever who cares what they wrote a song about or why they wrote the fucking song or what the song fucking means if that's all it takes to get your attention well you're a UC man <laughs> i got more things to think about than why what this song lyric means but hmm. you could attribute that to my laziness because i don't you know I don't want to be bothered with shit that's not interesting or important, maybe. No, nothing's important. Let's, uh, uh-oh, the wife's going to get on me about that one. But, yeah, nothing in life is all that important unless I want it to be. I think it's a choice to make. And if I make the choice, that's me making that choice. And But, see, here's the problem is we're living in this electronic, full, you know, full of shit bullshit world in the first place where everything we're 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 taking in we're taking it in on a wrong frequency at a wrong this and a wrong that and we're fueled with second rate food and second rate water second rate everything then if you got hobbies like i like to smoke the cannabis well some people consider that a deficiency mm, not me i consider the cannabis addiction that I've been accused of having, that seems to balance things out rather well. I find myself um, less combative, you know, when I'm uh, burning the marijuana cigarette as opposed to when I'm not. Uh, well, of course, that's me. That's how I see me, how you see me. Of course not. Because you're on the other side of the fence with your own thing. And I think that's what the fence is for. <clears throat> Stand on your side of the fence if feel it's necessary i don't really think sadly i don't think any of it matters in the overall it's just it's a personal thing for a minute gets your attention or it doesn't that's it not everything in life is is uh life or death Ooh, she's cooking a little fire out in the backyard my wife the city girl she's got her little country life going on so you know in a perfect world i suppose that's uh maybe that's what i feel i got in, in all this this crap going on out there out in the big the where the grown-ups play you know that might be all fucking falling apart for all i know but i don't really care because i'm just here with cirque and i've never been one you know like to worry about well what what am i gonna do because i'm doing something now so I'll do whatever I do in the end, whatever the fuck it is. I don't think it matters. I think it matters to me. <laughs> I think it matters to Cirque. <clears throat> but uh, I don't think it matters to anybody else, really. What we do or what we don't do, what we say or don't say, uh, it's beyond all that. This is the electronic world. This is representative of something way deeper than uh, I'm capable of of using or doing some so at some level because i remember giving mary shit about being on facebook years and years back right and her answer was hey my family's on it shut up yeah okay got it now she didn't say shut up but what what it meant was that picking on her for being on it wasn't going to take her off it she wasn't she wasn't using it only you know 
only because oh everybody else is doing it it was a like a responsibility a quick way to get in touch with a large group of family members all right and i i understand that what i didn't understand is you know why don't they come to find you if but people are you know people are like that i i left people didn't come to find me i let them know where i was going no 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 and water under the bridge why don't you go don't burn your bridges behind you well why not it makes it a whole lot easier to live in the now when you don't have the trappings of years ago you know constantly consuming your your mind so that you won't be comfortable where you are mm. i don't know i i i i i i because in a perfect world i'm the center of the world I would hope that the rest of you in your world would realize that you're the nucleus of your world. Whatever you believe and whatever you see, it's what you want. You have a, a an amazing amount of control of what you're surrounded by. You just don't know it because we've been conditioned as collectives for years and years and years. If you don't see this this way, there's something wrong with you. You're a weirdo. Okay, so what? I'm a weirdo. What difference does it make? How does my being a weirdo influence you? You know? <laughs> oh, but because I'm reading your text on the chat. Okay, well, so. I'm not fucking uh, Shakespeare. I can't write. I never claim to be a good writer. I write, but not like Vinny. We're all. I'm trying to leave a message behind me for the world to know. Not like that. I'm more entertaining people. Not too many, but I, I've got a few people I entertain. And uh, maybe there's hope for some of us that uh, that aren't uh, so clingy to that, you know, oh, it could get better. Well, if it could get better, it indicates there's something wrong now. It's like this uh, clean the swamp shit. When I heard that about choked on my fucking coffee, I thought, well, at least they're admitting it's a swamp, you know. What, but what a what an identifying word for the from the man that's sitting in the most powerful seat of decision as far as governments are concerned. So they put the loose cannon Donald Trump up there, and I figured that he probably only blows off about fifty percent of the time he's talking out at the side of his neck, and the other fifty he's repeating what his orders are to tell you, and. I don't know how anybody could ever come to a decision other than that. Oh, Trump's going to this and Trump's going to that. Well, I don't know. He's signing bills. You know, who tells him to sign the bill or not to sign the bill? Oh, that's not how it works. He decides all by himself. Okay, well, you know, he's such a good businessman. He's got three damn bankruptcies behind him and one pending. So, oh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to trust him with my finances in the future. Wow. See, I don't I don't get it. So, what I do get is he's the front man for a really shitty band. Period. You know, and instead of booing him off the stage, he was he was welcomed by enough people or at least the illusion of welcome. I don't I don't know. I've in all the time I've been on the internet in uh, reallibertymedia.com, I can count the Trump supporters on one hand that I've encountered. That I can remember. I mean, doesn't seem like. Uh... Oh, let me see. I got an incoming message from the Grimner. And Grimner says, Flash somebody. I can't understand what you write when you write. With a Vienna, I need a secret decoder ring. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well,. See, that's Vinny is trying to to improve on something that's already perfect, the written word. And, well, it's all a matter of perspective to me. I mean, I'm looking at English is fine. I use it all the time. I don't try to uh, and create new ways to say shit. Or not ways. I don't try to create new words to describe something. I try to use something, maybe I like when I use the word saunter when I explain how my cat walked across the the floor because to saunter is it's a performance it, and some people aren't familiar with the word I was showing off. Oh, look at my wonderful vocabulary. Hmm, I must be intelligent. Ha ha ha. 
And uh, so instead of just using obscure, I think Vinny tries to create. He's trying to be creative. And, well, you you know, you learn by your errors, I think. And if that's not going to work for him, he needs to find out. But that's what he does. That's in my opinion. Because he likes to be funny and amusing. And he sees the wordplay. There's a, there's a lot more to this when you go into looking to definition and origin of English words. You find out about... I don't know how, what percentage of what we use, but it's all been rewritten, rearranged. The the vibrations resonate on different frequencies depending on what words you use to say certain shit. And it's like, what makes these uh, political things so attractive to people? The advertising. The way it's delivered to them on that frequency that they're tapped into. And it gets their freaking, uh, their dick hard, man. And they're going to go out there and they're going to vote. Well, yeah, sure, but what are they gonna get? You know that they're crazy. They they think that they're voting for somebody that's gonna do something for them when they only had two choices in the first fucking place. And for those of you that are Trump supporters, I mean, don't forget the Clintons and the Trumps were tied at the nipple for years and years. He supported the fuck out of her. So, hmm. And now he's the president. Nah, th- this is a scam. We're we're all being we're all being lied to. Like this, uh, what's the latest crap he's been doing? Um, tariffs and uh, trade agreements and punishments, all kinds of financial crap going on. Oh, we're gonna punish you financially. No, you're not. You're gonna punish the people that use the shit that you're not going to deliver to them. And it doesn't hurt the people in power and finance and money because they already got all that shit. We're down here fighting for the 7%. And they're still willing to throw 7%. Wait till they cut that down to 5 Things aren't going to get better. They're going to get tighter. The competition is going to get worse. The AI is coming to replace you, take you out of your job, and all that kind of crap. So if you're young and in the workforce and alive, trying to do shit, you're in this new world that me, me and uh, Grim didn't come out of that. We, we were in it already. Now, that's our age. But the young folk, my wife's age and younger, I mean, my God. But Cirque, as young as she is, she's got her shit together about, you know, in my opinion, about these topics of which I speak. Uh, my wife is probably the number one fan of any, you know, if there is a, such a thing. Because I get a few people on the Real Liberty Media that uh, they get a kick out of my radio. Miss Kate, she'll usually say something when she's got time to listen. But during the week, I do radio when she's working. You know, and there's, see, the when you, somebody else tells you what you can and cannot do, don't tell me how free you are. Because no, that, you know... I'm free right up until the time I got to leave and go get my wife at the train because, you know, we have a ritual and a routine, walking the dog, getting stuff from the grocery and all this stuff's got to be done. And just making her sit there and wait for half an hour at, you know, after a day's work would be kind of nasty. So I time it. So I, when the train's pulling up, so am I. And uh, that seems to work. She can have herself a little bit of a smoke and, you know, get her sea legs because she's been on that train for an hour or whatever hour and a half but uh other people i don't know if they think about these things you know when when you're uh coupled with somebody else the other person doesn't have to come first you just got to recognize them a lot you can't not recognize the other partner or shit will you know be misinterpreted and next thing you know you you don't have a partner anymore (laughs) so so i see i think uh, what we lose the ability to do with, in time with each other is keep them interested in who, whatever it is, the fuck it is we got them interested in in the first place. And people grow up and they change and they separate. And it, Cirk and me started out, we're exactly the same now as we were when we, when we met. There's been no life changing out, you know, outside things that were um, inspired by like government and all that that was we did what we wanted to do leaving copenhagen uh was a joint thing it wasn't me going hey i want to get out of here it was hey that's a good idea i've never lived in the country let's go see what there is 
and there you go. And instead of uh, being a bully, you know, because bullies get their way for a while. I've been bullied. I just don't tolerate it anymore. But, oh, yeah. And people are subtle about their bulliness, you know. Sometimes the ways that somebody reads your typing, to them, you're bullying them. They don't, the person writing doesn't see that. Because the person is writing what they think and what they got and their ideas and whatnot. And the person reading it is reading with their their personality. So, hmm. it's kind of a catch-22. I know I bring it up a little often, but it's... uh. The ability to communicate with other people is rare. Not a lot of people have it. Some people try real hard, and uh, but no, it's a it's a gift. I think I may not have it. I have it for twenty people, and a few people on RLM chat. But uh, but still, that's that is more than I'm willing to do physically in the first place. So mm, I don't want a room full of twenty people to talk to. I I prefer this, and I, I do I do feel more comfortable on on the radio with a uh, somebody to to talk to, but the programs doing them solo that that's different because I don't have anybody else to ask. I've got to come to my own you know conclusions and ask my own questions, bring up my own topics, and try to be uh, versatile. You know, because not everything's funny and not everything is serious. So there's got to be a balance point to it. And every once in a while, you know, I'll throw a voice out there or read something goofy I wrote down. But for the most part, I when I do the solo stuff, I'm finding I, I'm being more of a grown-up than a, like on the dork table. Because <laughs> I could be an organ farmer when I grow up. You know, and following the footsteps of the great Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. Of course, I'd have to find a taste for fava beans and Chianti. But that's just a detail. I could adapt. Because, you know, in the, in the future, this is, this is what really irritates the shit out of me. For years and years and years and years and years, I don't know how many fucking years, all of them, I suppose, 59 years, I've been hearing all these stories. Things are going to get better. Oh, we're going to do this, and this is going to improve that. We're going to do this, and that's going to improve that. And at the end, all I see is all the lies and bullshit that I was <laughs> not necessarily sold, but pitched. Government pitched it. Education pitched it. Religion. What else? What what other entities out there uh, try to control you so that you'll give them money and feel a part of a group Know, the Republicans, Democrats, the church, all that crap. Baseball teams, you name it. Anywhere where there's an exchange of money, what you have is people controlling you. And it, why? Because we're all in this debt-based shit in the first place that there is no money. So what is there? IOUs. Okay, we're living on credit. Passing around IOUs, calling it success. And whenever you doubt it or you question it, eh, you get aggravation. People don't want to, I don't, you're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. But, see, that's why I say it's all bullshit. You know, in the long run, if, <laughs> if it changes my life in any way, what happens in, say Nicaragua, I sure like to know how. I mean, outside of being a supply a source of something, your bit of dirt doesn't interest or have any, I don't have, I don't give a fuck. I only care about what I do, not what I don't do. So I think about shit like, well, my stand on driving. I drove a lot of years, a lot of cars, a lot of miles, lots and lots and lots, probably more than some people on the internet. Um, catch my voice and then there's some people that have traveled and still do a lot more than I ever will so I'm not you know I'm not in the upper crust I'm just like above average on uh, traveling driving riding in a car driving a car that kind of thing and I don't miss it I've been uh I think it's four years comes up 
four years in, might be five. No, 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 it would be four years this, like, July or something. The last time I actually rode in a motorized vehicle. Not a train, not a bus, not a car, nothing. And I'm boycotting big oil. Now, that, it's kind of a joke, I tell, because it's a result of the lifestyle that I chose. And this didn't require a car, so fuck it. Don't need one. Why bother if you don't need something? See, that. I don't know where you judge need. I guess distance traveled, but uh, see, Cirque's got a a, a thirty mile com- about thirty forty mile commute each way. But she likes her. She likes what she does and where she works and all that. So it's not and it's not like a a grueling thing. It's just a commute. But if she didn't enjoy the commute and she didn't enjoy the job, then things would be completely different. So. You know, having that good side of fortune shine on her makes life easy for me because I don't have some partner that hates what she does and is constantly complaining about, oh, I got to do this. No, I got to do that. No, no, it ain't like that at all. And in fact, she got invited. This is going to crack you gun lovers up. She got invited to go shoot skeet with uh, live ammunition, I think next week. And I want her to go. I don't I don't think she'll fin- physically go through with it. I have a feeling that at the last minute she'll go, no, nah, I don't really want to. But then on the other hand, say 50-50 chance that in the right moment she might want to try it to prove that she doesn't want to do it. So I think that her going and messing with this gun under the conditions that she explained to me, they're reasonable. Um, personally, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't waste my time at all. But it's... It's also job related, people she works with and shit like that. So it's social work, workle. Social workle. <laughs> I just created a new word like Vinny. <laughs> I said I wasn't trying to do it. I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. Stop, help, help. Anyway. Yeah, in a perfect world, I, I find myself uh, thinking of Vincent quite a bit because uh, Vinny is Vinny. You know? And I guess. That's the the point is if, if you don't want to hear what Vinny's saying, then turn him off. And if you don't want to read what Vinny's writing, then don't read it. But to, uh, the, the, the knowledge that you don't know who this is reaching, you know. I've got people on BitChute that listen to uh, this uh, program that we're doing tonight in a perfect world with me and Vinny. So... I guess there's some people out there that either are entertained by the clash of me and Vinny or they're, uh, may, may, I don't know, maybe they agree with one or the or of us or both about certain topics. Whatever the hell makes people listen to programs, because I listen to odd programs all the time to see what's out there, you know, what's new, what's coming up. But very rarely am I really impressed like that, uh, the fat bald guy that, I can't say his name, Ter- Something, something. Anyway, uh, his name came up in the chat. I think it was Hansel was side of saw link of his, and the guy is just—he's incredibly full of himself. But people that are that full of themselves are usually a either correct or they're full of themselves, and there's no way to tell. <laughs> You can't judge that for a group. You can only judge that for yourself by your own judgment system, whatever that may be. But it's a nice way to distract from the knowledge or lack of knowledge he represents. And he's got a lot of bit, a lot of stuff about cameras. I was watching a link he did on uh, cameras and taking pictures with a computer and this kind of that. The all Cirque knows all, a lot more about all that. She's a photographer. And we're listening to the link, and she's sitting there agreeing with him about something. Over my head. Didn't even get my attention enough to remember the details of it. But it was from Pompous Boy with the bald head and the glasses and the ink. But he's smart. I think he's smart. But uh, recommending him to you? Nah. You'll find him, and then just like Hansel. Hansel found him. Hansel had nothing but, you know, kind of ridicule. But you can't judge one you know a person's entire uh, existence off one link unless of course it is a link of them fighting with a liberal in a starbucks 
Now that would, wow, that's entertainment, baby. Let me tell you. Uh, but the, the fat bald guy on the internet, you know, on the YouTube or whatever, uh, that's source of income for him. He's entertaining. But then a lot of what he says makes a lot of fucking sense. But the old queen is, uh, he's just like, wow. It's hard, it's hard to listen to somebody talk in that tone and that style. But the knowledge is worth it. So I suffer through it. But uh, recommending them to other people. Hmm. That would be like me. Who the fuck would recommend my perspective on the Federal Reserve Bank to a banker? <laughs> hey, my friend the banker wants to hear you talk. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. I said, hey, sir, if you want to get fired from your job, just, hey, take me down to one of those fancy things and I'll grab a hold of a lawyer and talk to him. I'll have you fired in 10 minutes. And she said, no, I, I don't want to live out in the park. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> so, I'm kidding. But uh, the point is, seriously, that I am so against the system that that would be the result of me interacting with the system and and doing what I would do during that interaction, which would be drink, <laughs> drink, and then look for a lawyer to talk to, because that would be a lot of fun while I was drinking. And I'm sure in my drunken state, I would say something rude to the lawyer, and the lawyer and me would have problems. So when you have that mentality, then you have to. Uh, you have to be big enough, I think, in the world to avoid pitfalls. And whatever the consequences of your decisions are, live with them. Like, I'm very lucky that Cirque didn't take all that badly and say, Hey, but you're my husband. And on and on and on. You could at least go there and not for a night, not drink. And what I got out of her is, you know, I really don't want to go either. So I'll use you as an excuse to tell them that I can't make it. It's your fault. <laughs> And I don't care. They can blame me for, fuck yeah, blame me for World War II. Uh, I killed six million Jews with a Cuisinart. You name it. I don't I don't have a fucking problem with people telling, uh, oh, he did this and oh, he did that. Because whenever they do that to me, in the end, it always shows. Every time they go, wow, I thought you were a computer hacker. Lou, you don't know fuck all about a computer, do you? <laughs> Went, no, not really, but, you know. Let my reputation carry the weight. Because like they said in Liberty Valance, you know, if the uh, legend is better than the truth, go with the legend. Fuck the fuck the, the truth ain't going to sell to anybody. You got to tell them the story they want to hear. They're not going to buy your book. And that's, I don't know if that's a, uh, a staple or not. It seems to, I started the show out talking that kind of crazy shit with, what, what did I say at the beginning? It's almost the end of a, uh, in a perfect world without Vincent tonight. And I don't know. I spend a lot of time just jibber-jabbering about my personal feelings on chat. Because uh, we take it all how we take it. You, you can take it how you want. It doesn't matter. The sad part about it, yeah. An opinion about something I read on a chat doesn't mean anything to anybody but me. So, eh. I try to just let it go. But, eh, who knows. Well... I don't know what I'm going to do for a title for the show. I thought I wrote something down. I was stalling looking for it while I was jibber-jabbering. Um, but, you know, I've written some really clever lines like, I get a kick out of watching you play Nazi. <laughs> I thought it, I, you know who I'm talking about. And, uh, let's see. Oh, Training Wheels is a bootleg album by the Stones. I heard, a, 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 a what was that? Uh, just a, an instrumental version of um, S Slipping Away by Keith. And no no Jagger on it. It was kind of nice. And they claimed it was off Training Wheels, a bootleg Stones album. See, little little things I write down here in my notes. For some reason, little things that catch my attention. Go figure, huh? But, you know, ah, here we go. You know, they're going to replace us with robots. You know, so they can have the perfect slave that can't resist. And it's right in front of everybody's face because, well, when when you have a machine, the only thing a machine can do to, to not do what you tell it is malfunction. It can't decide, oh, I'm not going to do what you want. I'll do, I'm, 
I'm free. I got rights. <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Anyway. Yeah, tonight's show I'm going to call Progress Must Be Promoted by the Right Guy. And, uh, you know, getting along with other people, ah, it's half of it is just, it's not, it, it is real, and at the same time, it ain't. It's, hey, Cowboy Tech, uh, I always have at least a day. You know, some days, uh, if I don't want to be in a good mood, I can be a pissy-ass fuck if I want to, you know, but I don't do that very often. And it might seem that way bantering with, with Hansel, but nah, that's his, my sick side coming out trying to be funny. And with that, I'll say thanks a lot to uh, the folks that hung in here for In a Perfect World Without Vince. And the lineup coming up, a uh, special thanks to Grim for tolerating my inability to operate this equipment alone. And thinking I needed help when all I was doing was uh, silencing myself and I didn't see the light. Uh, what a day. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to end a little early because I started a little late, I suppose. And tonight is Tuesday. So tomorrow we have 7 o'clock and Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast. Graham Z on the Rocket Chair podcast. And on Thursday, I come back with my solo podcast, 20% off. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a deal <laughs> like any Jew would. And Friday, I think Vinny's going to do a, a Ponder Gander at 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Grammy at 7, Rocket Chair. And at 11 on the East Coast, you got Grimner and Moose Girl do Freaker's Ball, unless Moose is out. Um, festivaling. I don't know what else to call it. She goes out to hear bands play and such. So it could be a bar, it could be a festival. You know, you never know with her. And Saturday morning, I'm coming back with a dork table at uh, noon on the East Coast and might have a hostage, might not. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Sunday morning, Grimner starts us off with some uh, blues. And he plays the blues up through the trivia game. And 3 o'clock on the East Coast, Hal Anthony comes out of from behind the woodshed and uh, does his whoop-ass thing. And then, yeah, 3 o'clock on the West Coast on Sunday. And then Monday night at 7 on the East Coast, got Grim Leftovers. And he's numbering his episodes. I believe he just did number 22, if I, memory serves. And if not, well, well. I tried. At least I pay attention. But Grim Leftovers, and uh, that's the stuff he couldn't get to when he was doing Freaker's Ball or Balls to the Floor on Friday night. And then Wednesday, Grammy with a rocket chair at 7. So, oh, wait, no, I'm doing it backwards again. Then Tuesday night, <laughs> Vinny should be back in form, and uh, we'll do the Ponder Gander Flash Somebody Crazy Seeing the world from two different angles thing that me and Vinny seem to do. We see things alike, but some things, I don't know. Some things not so much. So we we try to do a little radio with it with without letting the personalities take over and, like, and get too pissed off about the other thing the other guy said. And we've come a long way with this. I've known Vinny for a few years now. And, uh, you know, when, you, when you're that tight with people, you can fight and get pissed off at them, and then let a little time go by, and then get back and start working it all over again. And uh, that that's what uh, I'm doing with Vinny on In a Perfect World, is the whole fucking thing is happening the way it really is happening. Like tonight, he had a, a thing to go to, so he left town, and he's not here. But if he was here, we'd be arguing about who owns the color blue. And uh, special thanks to Grimner again and everybody on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat for hanging out here at In a Perfect World. And I'll see you guys next week, same bat time, same bat